Have you ever tried to remove something using the erase tool in Luminar Neo and had limited success? How about the clone tool? How well are you able to get that one to work for you? What if I told you they should be used together for the best success in removing objects from your images? Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the clone tool and the erase tool together to achieve the results you want quickly and easily. You'll learn what they each do, how they're different, and how to use them in combination. So if you're ready, let's begin. First, let's take a look at the Erase tool and what it does. You'll find it in the Essentials panel. I've folded up some of the things above here, my favorites and my extensions, so that I can get to it quicker. You can do that just by clicking on the name or on the little down arrow next to the name of that section. Once you open the Erase tool, it's pretty simple to use. Just paint over the area you want to erase or remove. I'm going to use a large brush and just paint over the entire moon in this case. When you click Erase, what the program will try to do is to use Content Aware Fill, meaning it analyzes the area around where you've painted and will try and fill it in with the best match. Let's see how well it does here. Erase. And poof, the moon is gone. So it works pretty well. A couple of things to keep in mind about the Erase tool is there are no opacity sliders, so you can't only partially erase something or fade it out. It's either in or out, there's no middle ground. And second of all, this one was pretty simple and straightforward, so it works extremely well, but it doesn't always do a perfect job. We'll take a look at that in a minute, and I'll show you the solution. Next, let's look at the clone tool. So I'm just going to undo my erasing. The clone tool is found all the way at the bottom under the professional tools. If you need more information about the clone tool or any other tool in Luminar Neo, you can just click this little eye icon, which is new in one of the latest updates. It'll give you minimal information here in a pop-up. If you're still not sure and you want to know more, just click the link that says learn more. It will take you to the online user guide and jump to the page for that tool so you can read a bit more about it. But let's see how it works in action. There are three sliders. You can set the size of the brush that you're going to paint with, just like you can with the erase tool. But this one has another slider, which is the softness. This is just the amount of fade of the edge of the brush. So zero softness is a hard edge brush and you'll get a hard edge paint. 100 is a soft edge brush, so it will blend a little bit nicer. And finally, the strength slider, which is equal to the amount of opacity. We'll see how this works in a moment. For this first example, I'm going to use a large brush, and I'm going to turn the softness down a little bit because it doesn't really matter in this case. And you can see that it's telling you to begin, you need to set the source. So I'm going to choose the middle of the moon as my source. So the way this works is when you set the source, you're going to be cloning from that area to the other area where you paint. So now I'm going to move my brush down here and you can see what happens. It's giving me a representation of what it's going to look like once I click the brush. So I'm just going to do one brush stroke, making sure I get the whole moon. And you can see that it literally copied and pasted or cloned the moon over to the other spot. If I want another moon, that is done by choosing the source again. So I'm gonna go over top of the middle of the moon, hold the Alt Option key down, click on the moon once more, and now I'm free to move to a new spot and clone again. So I can make as many moons as I want. Let's try five. So that's what the cloning tool does. That's at 100%. Let's see what happens if I change the opacity or the strength. This time I'm going to dial the strength down to 30%. Now I'm going to choose the moon once again. And this time, let's get a bigger brush again. This time when I paint, I'm just gonna do one brush stroke. You can still see the background behind it or the moon is semi-transparent. So it's only been painted at 30% opacity. If I do another pass, another 30% has been added. So each time 
I release the mouse and click again and paint a second time or a third time, it's doing 30% more and building it up. Eventually, you'll have 100% and have the whole moon. But there are times when you want to paint at a lower opacity. We'll see that in a moment. So now let's apply what you learned about the tools on this image. So if I want to remove the lamp post or light standard, which tool am I going to use? Erase or clone? Think about it for a moment. The answer is a little bit of a trick question. You can actually use either or use both. Let's see how it works. I'm going to use the erase tool first. Anytime you are erasing or cloning, I recommend zooming in to at least 50%, generally 100%. You want to be able to see the area a little bit closer up and it will make your brushwork more precise when you're zoomed in. So always zoom in whenever you're cloning or erasing. My brush is slightly bigger than the light pole. So I'm just going to paint over the first part up to about there and see how it does. When using the erase tool, I recommend doing bit by bit and see how it does before you move on to the next part of the thing you're erasing. You can see that it did a good job here, so I'm gonna go on to remove the rest of the pole. Now this subject is pretty easy to erase because it's simply one thing on a, on a really clean and plain background. There's nothing to blend. So you can see what a great job the erase tool did. It's quite believable, and you can see, oop, I missed the bottom part. So remember when you're zoomed in, make sure you move the screen so that you could get the whole thing. Uh, don't miss part like I did. Now I've got the whole thing. So it did a really good job and the pole has been removed. Let's undo it. Let's try doing the same thing with just the clone tool. So once again, I'm going to zoom in to 100%, make sure that I can see the bottom of the image this time. And I'm going to go with a more of a hard edge brush because I don't necessarily want to blend it as much. I'm gonna go at 100%. And make sure that the brush is just slightly larger than the post. So I'm going to clone from the blue. I want to clone from the sky. So set the source area first, right there. And you can see when I put the mouse over the pole and just hover, that it's showing me that it's going to copy the blue sky into the pole. So I'm just going to start painting. Okay, now you'll notice that the mid, the bottom got missed, which is fine, we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more, we're at 200% now. You can see that I missed that part. So I just need to set the source again. I'm just gonna go from above it this time and paint down. So the key to using the clone tool effectively is to change your source frequently. Don't clone always from the same direction. And I'll show you that here, because if I keep cloning from this direction, so if I set my source over here again, and I keep cloning over this way, watch what happens eventually. Oops, now I'm cloning the light pole over to a new area. Okay? So that's not what we wanna do. So in this case, I'm going to select the area below the light as the source this time, and clone upwards. That looks much better. So, oops, see, same problem again. If I keep going, I'm going to make another light standard. So undo, and I'm using Command or Control Z or Z, which now does work in Luminar Neo. Especially when you're working with the clone tool, undo is your friend. So I'm just gonna go as far as here. Then I'm gonna come from the top. So new source, Alt Option, click, and then I'm gonna come from the top. Now when we get up to here, okay, so I did it again. We have to blend that out. You gotta be careful of your spot. Now I'm gonna come from over here to get rid of this last bit of it. Okay. Yeah, see the challenge with that is I need to have the source closer to the lamp this time. Because I don't want to clone too far away and I don't want to recreate the edge of the lamp, like so. But now we've got a new problem. Can you see that the sky has got some uneven tones? It doesn't match perfectly, specifically right here. So actually what I'm going to do is continuing to use the clone tool, I'm gonna to turn it down to that 30% that I showed you a moment ago. I'm gonna get a softer brush, 
a bigger brush and I'm just going to come from above and clone down a little bit just to try and blend these colors in a little better. See that? I'm blending the edge of the cloud as well. So I'm just going at 30% just to make sure it blends. And I'm changing the source constantly as my finger is on that Alt Option button. Let's zoom out and see how it looks. That looks pretty good. So in this case, for this image, the Erase tool works fine by itself and the Clone tool works fine by itself. Let's take a look at an image that's more difficult. This image has lots of stuff going on in the background. Specifically, on his left, there's this wire or cord across these bars here, and it's really distracting because it's next to him. So I want to get rid of it. So let's start with the Erase tool. Remember, zoom in to 100%. Let's make sure we can see the edge of the image. And I want to show you what happens if we attempt to do the whole thing at once. So I'm just going to get a bigger brush and I'm going to try and paint out the whole thing and see if it does a good job or if it makes a big mess. I'm going to guess a big mess, right? And this is often what happens when people are using the erase tool and not getting the results they want. They're trying to clone out too much at one time. So that's why I say take smaller chunks and do it little by little. Okay, can you see what happened here? It's erased the rope, but it's not matching up with the background very well. Okay, so I'm going to undo, clear it, and let's just do it little by little. So I'm gonna start with this area over here on the red background. Then I'm gonna do the next section here over top of this wood. So I'm just gonna do it sort of section by section, little by little sometimes just a click of my mouse. Let's do, let's do this section here. Let's do this section here. Okay, so now we've got a double Pepsi sign, which is interesting. So we're just getting rid of bits at a time. Let's see how it does on this part. It needs information from the background to be able to erase things, okay? And it's doing its best, but it's not perfect, right? So let's go over this again, see if we can get rid of the Pepsi sign. We definitely don't want two Pepsi signs. Not necessary, and it's better. But can you see what's happening? We're getting lots of sort of re repetition. I'm gonna zoom in to 200%. See, it's not perfect, okay? And the first time I did this, I actually got a better result, but we're gonna work with this from here and move over to the clone tool to refine it. So close the erase tool, open the clone tool, and once again, I'm gonna go at about 30% with a fairly soft brush, and I'm gonna go a little smaller this time. So I'm gonna fix the first part first. So I'm gonna click here as my source, and I'm just gonna clone up. So I'm trying to match the edge there. Right? See that? So when I clone up, I'm using the same direction that the wood is going. Right? I could also go down from this direction. Okay? So matching things. See how that's already better? Just like that. Okay? Now I want to make sure that this diagonal completes. So I'm going to click in the middle here, and this time I'm going to go up diagonally. So I might make a couple of different strokes and then I'll come up here and go down. Right? So I'm trying to complete it. Maybe I need to go further away. So I'm trying to complete this diagonal. Now I wanna sort of complete this bag. Right? Fill this dark area in. So the key here is constantly changing the source and cloning from side to side, left to right, top to bottom, and just keep changing it so you don't get repeating patterns and you can successfully fill in the area. I'm not concerned about sharpness here, but one thing to note is if you're doing a lot of cloning at 30% like this, it tends to look blurry. 
And in this case, because I want the background blurry anyway, I'm not concerned about that. But it's something to pay attention to if you're trying to clone something that you want to stay sharp. Now let's do this part here. Again, I'm gonna start right lined up to this edge of this wood. So I'm gonna start there and just go straight down. Remember, I'm still at 30%. Check my strength below. So I just keep doing one stroke, another stroke, okay? Same thing here. I might decide I wanna get rid of this red mark here on the, on the wood. So I'm just going up, okay? Now I'm gonna go up from there. So up from the bottom, down from the top, and eventually they're going to blend nicer together. I can even go from here, like so. Okay, so see how I just went up a little bit further just to blend it. Once again, diagonal here. So I'm gonna keep working on this, and I'll come back and show you what I was able to accomplish. Okay, I've done a portion of it, so I'm just gonna turn it off. And on. Can you see how that's working really well? Remember to zoom out and check it also. Still looks good. Zoom back in and I'm going to do the next section. I'm going to start over here this time and I want to get this line of this wood straight. Okay, so I want to make sure that I clone from here straight down. Okay, so straight down like so, I'm trying to solve that bit that looks like it's crooked, you see that? And it should work if I do the same here. Okay, so it's filling in the part that's lighter and making it match better. Okay, same thing here again, I need to fill in this diagonal. So I'm working at 30%, you could change it to 50% if you want to go a little faster and you're confident in your brush strokes. So I'm gonna do that. Let's go from this way. So remember, I'm coming from different directions depending on what I need to fill in. Okay, one more time again, up and down, just getting it aligned like so, so I keep the line straight. Okay. Even here, you could see a difference of light and texture just to blend it. Now this is where it's kind of gone wrong, right? With the double Pepsi and all of these sort of weird things happening. So this one here, I might just want to clone sort of randomly because I want it to fill in, but I don't want repetition, okay? So I'm trying to get rid of the repetition of the same thing over and over again. The key is, again, you want to keep selecting the source. I'm constantly have my thumb on that button. Keep selecting the source and changing it and I'm going to go over here a little bit more. I'm going to darken this. Keep selecting the source and changing it and change where you are painting into. The idea is you want to avoid repetition of pattern and make it look believable. Right? So let's just zoom back to 100%. Let's see the before and after. Right? Can you see how well that's blended? And if we take a look at the full before and after, it's done a really good job. Now I can see that this pole here probably needs a little bit more work and I might wanna remove the curly cube by the shoulder. But now that you have the technique, you can continue. So if you want to remove this pipe or pole coming down here, you could do so as well. So let me ask you this. Have you struggled to use either of these tools in Luminar Neo in the past? And is this tip going to help you to be able to remove unwanted elements from your images with greater success? Let me know in the comment area below if you've ever used these together and how you feel this is going to help. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my teaching style and you want more step-by-step -step instructions to learn the software, check out Luminar Neo The Complete Course. You'll find a link to it in the pinned comment below. Click either of the videos on the screen now to watch more photo editing tutorials using Luminar Neo, Lightroom, and Photoshop.